Thank you, guys. It's always good to do stuff like, I guess, vet and VCAL in schools because I guess you get paid to, uh, you know, effectively, you get to learn this kind of stuff that you wouldn't normally learn in uh, schooling anyway. The next one we're going to get is, is, I guess, really, uh, really bright guy when it comes to uh, app development and things like that. He's going to come out and talk to you now. His name's Matthew. I think he's hosting us in the Rotunda, but he's going to give you a little bit more about it. Let's get a round of applause going. Has anyone ever written uh, an Android app or an iPhone app or something? Yeah? All right, good. Good to see. Good. And um, which, what was easier to write? Uh, what do you, or who's written both for Android and um, Apple? So what do you think was the easiest platform? Android, yeah? And why would you say it's easiest? Yep, all right, so, so the, ja the Java, yep, yep. Cool. All right. Um, while the tech stuff's getting set up, who wants some free Google stuff? Yeah. Yeah. And how I'll give one to this guy because he gave us a good answer. So, no worries. So, all right. So, uh, if you guys were here on um, what was yesterday? Monday, if you guys were here on Monday, I know yesterday was Tuesday, I know, I know, I know, but I was here on Monday, so if you guys were here on Monday, um, you would have seen me, I was talking a bit about um, computer science, so yeah, Android rules, man, yeah, Transformer Prime, or Transformer, yeah, Slider, nice, nice, alright, so, so I was here talking about computer science, and today I'm going to be talking about Android app development, and um, alright, so... Yeah, so app development. Um, at Monash, we are starting to pick up more on this. We've actually got a third year subject that we're doing, which is for app development and computer science, but the faculty is now putting in a few more units to do Android development subjects or um, app development, and I hope hopefully we can pick up iOS development later on. The reason why we do Android is because it is, um, it's easy to learn. Well, we learn Java in first year here, so it's um, pretty easy easy to just move straight into it. All right, so I'll start with a bit about myself, and um, I've written a few Android apps, and so when I started at Monash in 2010, I thought, I can't walk around with a, with a crappy PDF map, it's too big and bloated, and you know, so I'll, I'll write a web app. So I wrote this web app called We Uni, or called My Uni, on uh, www.weuni.com, and I used, it was like a mashup, using JavaScript, um, OpenStreetMaps, and Google Maps, and HTML5 geolocation. And I thought, that's, you know, that's pretty cool, but I can't really walk around with a laptop. So I went out and got myself an HTC Desire, and, um, and wrote an Android app for it. And I thought to myself, cool, well, you know, I could give this to Monash as a sort of present, or I can expand it and go universal, and I thought, Hell, why not go universal? So I named it my uni, published it onto the Android market on uh, 2010, and since then I've had 5,000 to 10,000 downloads. Um, it uses native Google Maps and an uh, OpenStreetMap layer. I don't know if you know OpenStreetMaps. It's actually it's um it's an it's a Wikipedia of maps. So any user can register an account and then edit it, edit go to the map and actually edit points on the map and places on the map. And that really wasn't good enough for me, because once I'd written my first Android app, um, I sort of got a bit addicted to it and wrote my second one. So in 2011, I, I wrote another app called GoToNote, and it was based, it's a location-based reminders app, and you can route to your location. And I won a, an award for it in last year, in November 2011. And um, since I've written my Android apps, I've been getting constant uh, offers of employment. Every month or so, someone comes up to me and says, you know, we're looking for a mobile developer. Do you want to come and do this stuff? Because it's a, a very um, fast-moving and growing industry. It's a very big, big in growing very fast. Um, this wasn't good enough for me either. I thought, I want Monash to be able to be recognized as an app development community. So a friend of mine, I bought the new Zoom last year. And a friend of mine's come up to me and he said, hey, man, that's a Zoom. And I'm like, yeah. And he's wearing an Android T-shirt. I'm like, dude, you into Android? He's like, yeah. It's like, hell, let's start something. So we ended up starting Mudroid. 
And MuDroid stands for Monash University Android Community. And it's a Facebook group. We've got about 70 or 80 people on it. And um, there, there are developers and just fanboys and enthusiasts and people sharing ideas for apps and ROMs and new devices and all this sort of stuff. So you're probably asking yourself, should I get into writing an app? And my answer is, sure, definitely. Now's the time to do it. It's never been easier to do it right now. If you look at the Google Play Store, the, this was taken last night, this picture I took. Look at the top, the top paid on the charts, Sprinkle. Now, you all know Sprinkle. You probably, uh, hopefully you do. Sprinkle's a, a, like a water, water um, physics game. So it's a game where there's a little dude and he shoots water and he tries to put out, you try to put out fires using a, um, a fire engine, helping these little dudes in their little village. Um, third is Where's My Perry? I've never played it. I've definitely played Where's My Water. Yep, all right, is it good? All right, cool. Um, Dead Trigger, that's a new one out by Mad Finger Games. And Where's My Water? So that's number fifth. So as you can see, if you're going to write Android apps, it's very good to write games. They become quite popular quite quickly. A another thing is portable devices are changing the way we work and play. So we've got desktop, desktop rigs that we use for games and gaming. And over the last year or, so, or couple of years, the gap's been closing between the power of our portable devices and our desktop computers. So what you've got quad cores and uh, eight cores, i7s and stuff. Well, I, um, NVIDIA just released the Tegra 3 recently this year, and that's quad core. So you can imagine in the future, we're going to be able to take our desktops with us in our pocket just about. So gaming will be mobile and portable. And recently, Google just released their latest version of Android. Now, if any of you guys uh, follow the Android news, you'll realize that the latest version, uh, does anyone know what it's called? No, that's the last version. The, new, the latest version released last week. Yeah, that's the one. Now, Jelly, Jelly Bean has been rewritten. The graphics has been rewritten for, for triple, it's got a triple buffer. They've put in a triple buffer and VSync. And they actually dedicated, Google's a bit weird, they dedicate things um, projects, they made this thing called Project Butter. And the idea behind Project Butter was to make Jelly Bean the smoothest, most less laggy experience on a device you can get. Because as you know, um, Apple devices are quite smooth, they don't have much lag. So Google made a, a big effort to increase the graphics performance of their latest operating system, which is really good for, for computer games. So, moving on. The Android platform, fastest growing platform, mobile platform on the planet. Around this time last year, there were about half a million activations a day, and that means half a million people were turning on their new Android phone per day. This time, this year, there's about a million activations every day. To become an Android developer, you don't have to pay 100 bucks each year. You pay 25 bucks, once off, done, for the rest of your life. And a good thing about developing for Android is that you don't have to wait. You don't, your app doesn't get sandboxed. It doesn't get put away for inspection. It goes straight to the Play Store the moment you're, you want to release it. So where do you start if you want to start writing Android apps? Over the last couple of years, Google have done a tremendous job at improving this information. It was really bad and sparse. And in the last year, they've put a lot of effort into their developers site. So if you just go to Google and type in Android developers, that'll come up with the Android developers site. If you go to training, up here you can see build you, building your first app. Now that's probably where you want to start. It helps you with setting up the tools to build your first app. And you'll be surprised. It is just it basically, when you, when you press create app, like start, create a new project, puts in place the whole app for you. And all you have to do is add the logic, a bit of graphic stuff, and it's just so easy. It's not funny nowadays. So once you've downloaded the tools for it and you're ready to start building your app, if you can't be bothered following instructions, if you're one of those people that goes, stuff it, I can't be bothered reading the, the manual, just go straight into the samples. So 
for example, this thing here, Jetboy, is like a 2D scroller game, and you can just load that straight up without actually writing any code at all, just clicking buttons going, create app. And then you can mess around with it. If you want to get serious about writing games for the Android platform, there are, you, you probably need to look into getting a, um, getting friendly with a game engine. And the game engines, I don't know a lot about it because I haven't written games for Android, I've written geolocation apps. But from what I've read, um, Unity 3D is a really good one. It's like, um, you saw Autodesk coming around recently and they talked all about their CAD stuff. So, you know, you got the, the um, you can manipulate objects in 3D space and you can create games using Unity 3D. Uh, it's quite easy to do in from that sense that you've got it in front of you and you can manipulate it. Another one to check out is something called AND Engine. So, if you, if you write a game for Android, you might want iOS to have access to it as well. You can you can do that with and, um, and Engine and Unity 3D. So in summary, writing an app is dead easy and your crazy idea for an Android app could make you famous and rich. I actually want to comp, so the go-to note app that I All right, yeah, cool, back on. All right, so yeah, I won a competition and um, it was pretty, uh, pretty surreal. I got flown up to Canberra to meet the um, Senator Conroy, the Minister for um, Communications, and Optus gave me a free phone and um, they gave me some cash as well. So the prizes are all there. There's lots of uh, competitions for writing apps and stuff at the moment, so you'll be surprised. All you need is a great idea and then do a bit of research on how to implement an app properly. And the implementation, if you do that well, you can win phones, money, trips, you name it. It's pretty easy. Another thing, Android's great for this sort of stuff. It's open source, so you can get into the code, actually nut, nut it out, have a look at all the, um, the way the internals work. It's easily accessible, so you, know, you can just download the SDK. You can download all the source code to your computer and, and go through it. And it's backed by Google, so you know that they're going to, they, they put a lot of effort into making their developers um, feel comfortable with developing uh, Android apps. Over the last couple of years, the resources have improved a lot, and so have the tools. And it's heaps easier now than it ever was to start building an app. So all I can say is hit up Android developers in Google if you want to start doing this, and you, I promise you will never look back. So good luck, and thank you. <laughs>